as soon as we posted again the talks on the the way towards the reality is is our way of non-existence and that we live a life in an ocean of duality and this world of mulk and form it's meant to separate and create individual units and Shaitan's job is to come to each individual unit and say, you're the greatest, you're the best and make something that is literally non-existent to feel that it's the most important thing ever created. Because you go into space and you see that earth and that we're a drop on the earth and the earth is a drop within a galaxy, the galaxy is a drop within an entire universe infinitely keeps going up and we infinitely become smaller and that little drop shaitan's whole goal is to make it think it's something. Um, tariqa comes by a ni'mat and a, and a gift from the Divinely Presence to remind humanity to be nothing and this countering of what shaitan wants to, to build to people from childhood and pumping, pumping, pumping. Tariqahs come and inspire the servants of Allah that take a path in which to be nothing, deflate yourself, continuously tell yourself that you're nothing and in that nothingness you can reach God's everythingness and that's the amazing reality of, of something that we say one thing it's actually opening the different. The more that we build ourselves and pump ourselves up the more we're actually separating and moving away from what Allah has destined for us. And the reality that when we come and we deflate and efface and negate ourselves, I'm nothing, I'm not really important, I know my sins Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing really, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi. Let that light to enter my heart, let the light of Prophet to enter my heart, let my shaykh's lights to enter into my heart, come into my heart and clean my Kaaba, come into my being and let your light to enter within me and to clean me, to fix me, to dress me. And the more I can efface and become nothing, the more His light can magnify within myself and that's the prayer that all the Prophets made. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For God's kingdom to come and that's why Allah describes that, if you want to be with Me Allah, Allah's the kingdom is the whole Divinely Presence embodied by a name called Alif Lam Lam He which Allah is an all-encompassing name in which Allah's name and attributes want to be known. Allah then describes, if you want to be with me you have to be with Nabiyeen, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. You have to be with the Prophets and the truthful companions of the Holy Prophets and you have to be with the martyrs, those whom they sacrifice themselves so that they could reach God's satisfaction and the Salihin, the righteous servants of Allah and I am with them. So it means that if Allah want us to be dressed with them, blessed with them, to reach towards them, then this path of ours is how to keep their company, how to continuously keep that light in our heart. That we're asking Allah to come and that's why Allah gives these categories, I'm with them but to just bring me first, you know just bring Allah's light completely into your heart. We're doing so many things in error, so many things that are incorrect, so many things that are, that are not to perfection. Allah then wants for us a protocol. That if I'm with Nabi'een, I'm with Siddiqeen, I'm with Shuhada and Salihin, find the group closest to you which are the Salihin like a rope that grab onto the groups of Salihin 
Because most likely if they're salihin and they're pious and they're righteous in their acts and in their deeds and in their, in their character, most likely they are connected to these shuhada. Shuhada are those whom they sacrifice themselves. That they sacrifice themselves for Allah and importance on this level of shuhada is that they went for jihad and as a result of their jihad and their fight they died in the way of Allah Somebody emailed as soon as these subjects come up that, oh is this the madad and calling upon uh, people who have passed away, is this a shirk? Right here you've now established the Wahhabi madhab and, and this is the greatest deceit in their reason why shaitan uses that madhab to deceive Muslims from the belief and from the entire reality of Islam. That this shuhada and those whom are martyred Allah said, don't deem them dead, they're very much alive and those are the ones whom they died in war. Now which is a greater war? The fighting against enemies or the fighting against yourself? What Prophet described to his holy companions because they accompanied the Messenger of Allah and they have to make sure that the message and the will of Allah is conveyed. They fought two battles a day on average and they were dying fiercely, fighting fiercely. No life insurance, they put everything in their life for that service and for survival, for, for the protection and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad so the station of a martyr is not something that can be imagined. And they martyred their way in the way of Allah and Allah is saying, I'm with them, be with them. Why? Because these martyrs they are alive, they are alive in their graves. The Nabiyeen, the Prophets are alive in their graves, Siddiqeen they are alive in their graves, all of Islam is based on that. If you don't have that understanding and that belief it's as if you're denying Medina and de denying the presence and the benefit and Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah believes in Hadir and Nadir that Sayyidina Muhammad is everywhere, shaitan is everywhere. You think who has more power? Shaitan takes from the power of Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen. So it means the izza might of Allah flows to Sayyidina Muhammad He is witnessing, omnipresent and omni-aware of everything. Means then the, the souls of the Prophets are alive. Even Sayyidina Muhammad described for us on Iswah wal Miraj, he went to Allah's presence and this is the world of light. He prayed with all the Prophets. If they were dead how is praying with all the Prophets on the Isra? That Allah will turn them with all their souls to pray and to give their salutations to Sayyidina Muhammad to be alive in their form in His presence, went for the miraj into the Divinely Presence. Allah commanded the nation to 50 prayers a day and then Sayyidina Muhammad went back to Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Musa asked, what did Allah order for your nation? He said, 50 salah a day. He said, I think it's going to be heavy for your nation, maybe you can ask Allah to reduce it. And there's a whole dialogue in the sharia and the understandings of Isra wal Miraj that the number of salah for the entire nation was reduced by the dialogue between Sayyidina Muhammad and Sayyidina Musa So a Prophet is taking benefit from a Prophet of God. So it means all of our belief is, is based on this. And then if, if Allah want to be with the martyrs, now you can… we get the understanding of the darajats. The one who martyred himself and was martyred in battle is one degree. But then Prophet described that the greatest battle, Jihad al-Akbar is the one where the servant fights himself. So the one whom fights himself 
he becomes a martyr. And Prophet describes his battle was Akbar, his battle was the greatest battle. So it means what an immense reality Allah places on the shi'u whom they battled themselves. Well there's no victory, there's no booty or treasure to get from that battle. It's only attacking oneself continuously in difficulty, continuously in grief, continuously in hardship for this world. And as a result Sayyidina Muhammad gave this, this is Jihad al-Akbar. So it means then these shiukhs and these ulama that they reached to this reality, Allah granted them to be mushahada, that they died before death. They died before death means then their soul is very much alive and they operate from that reality. Imagine the shaykhs whom Ahlul Basira and their hearts are alive, their souls are alive, they operate from the reality of the heavenly kingdom upon their being and their body already is of no need for them, they're operating from their soul. Imagine when one of those passes away. They become exponentially much more powerful because the body was an actual hindrance for them to achieve what they wanted to achieve. So for them it's just a parking of their physicality and they're operating with their soul. These are the, the lights of heavens and paradises that are operating upon this earth. Means these are immense realities that shaitan tries to block us. So anyone whom thinks like this means that you have to cut away this Wahhabi influence, cut away this Hezbo shaitan understanding. It blocks us from the reality and the immensity of that reality that Allah want to bestow upon us. Keep the company of my pious servants. I'm with Nabi'een, so you must believe that they're everywhere their light. You must only connect with them and that you ask that their light come into your heart and to dress you into your presence and to fill and to purify your reality. Purify my eyes with this light Ya Rabbi, purify my ears with this light, purify my heart and my tongue, my hands and my feet, my entire being, purify it with their lights. The madad is to bring their light into my light, into my being. And the Nabi'een, the Siddiqeen, if you're asking for the love of the Prophets and love of Sayyidina Muhammad then of course all his Siddiqs and all his companions that have reached immense proximities and might and dressings of beauty from Allah's Divine the Presence, their lights, ask for their lights to enter into your heart, to come into your being and to fight your devils and to fight your characteristics and that their light reside within your heart and with your soul. And Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhada that Ya Rabbi these big awliya, these big ulama, these scholars that let them their light to enter into my being and to begin to teach me and their fires is to reach me and let them to clean my eyes and my heart and my breath and my hands and my feet so that to purify my being for the arrival of Allah's Divinely lights. So means then, then the Salihin. So when we keep these categories of servants and we love them, we call upon them through the madad, we keep their remembrance and their teachings that we're remembering them, Mawlana Shaykh said this, Mawlana told this, Mawlana did like this, that by remembering and mentioning them it brings immense realities and rahmah into our being. And as a result of the one reaching cleanliness. Allah when He feels the servant is to be clean, He grants them ikhlas, He grants them the Divinely lights of sincerity. As a result of Allah granting sincerity then all these knowledges, all these realities, all these blessings begin to dress the servant and dress the light of the servant in which they can truly reach the understanding of Hadith Al-Qudsi that, I am the hearing in which you hear, I'm the seeing in which you see, the breath in which you breathe the hands in which you touch and the feet in which you move, so much so you become Rabbaniyoon means your soul, soul 
and its attributes of what Allah's dressing from His Divinely light, anything Allah dresses it becomes lordly, Rabbaniyoon. And no doubt if Allah's light upon your light, as soon as that light wants something it has power of kun fayakun because actually Allah's will is dressing that light. So it's no longer the will of that servant but when they ask for something is Allah asking through them to Allah back because their will, their desire has been dying and going down. What exists within them is the will of Ulul Am, the will of Sayyidina Muhammad and the will of Allah most high inshaAllah. These are immense realities to, to reach into these world of light, the reality of the madad, the reality of effacing ourselves and to become nothing, to be dressed and blessed by these lights. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us and not to give credibility to those and those people's beliefs, run from them. When they want to ask you about this subject just run say, what are you talking about the dead? They're all very much alive. The one whom is really dead is me and you. We are the walking dead on this earth. Don't you see how Allah sent these movies for us? Two years ago the, the most popular movie on earth was The Walking Dead. Why? Because Allah was giving us a sign that we are the flesh eaters and we are the walking dead. Don't deem yourself alive that you came into this world, we became heedless as a result we are the dead and they are the true living ones and the living servants of Allah because their hearts are alive, their souls are alive. Because when the dead all they do is qaybah and backbite and that's why you see them in the movies eating flesh and, and the flesh of each other and that's all this dunya. If you don't believe me turn on the news. You don't see anything from the heavens, all you see is ghayb the backbiting. Is biting, biting, biting is this is the walking dead. And the truly living heart and the truly ones whom are alive is what we're struggling to achieve in this world, Ya Rabbi. Make us from the dead, make us to be alive. Don't let us walk this earth in death and then to die in a state of death. And to die in a state of blindness that those whom blind in this world to be blind in the hereafter. Our whole life was the pursuit of these realities that Rabbi grant my heart to be alive. And the how is going to be alive? Muhi al qulub, the one whom revives the dead heart is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And when we love Prophet then we want to be with all his siddiqeen, all the shuhada whom they struggled against themselves to reach this reality and that all their students are salihin and dressed from that light. That Allah keep us in the company of these Divinely associations. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.